My name's Christine Patney, and I'm here with another episode of the PML Podcast. Today, I have with me Brittany from Accurate Title. Welcome, Brittany. Thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, Brittany, Brittany for... Ferrugio, it's a hard one. I told her that I could say that. I told her I could say it and then I completely messed it up. I apologize. It's okay. (laughs) Well, either way, welcome, Brittany. I'm glad to have you here. Um, I'm excited for our clients to learn a little bit more about you. So tell me a little bit more about yourself. How did you get into the title industry? Thank you. Okay, so I actually started 11 years ago. Yep, 11 years now. I was 17 years old. I actually got a summer job at Accurate Title. Um, back when they went electronic with all the documents. So I worked in the basement scanning old closing files uh, from 8 a.m. to 5 (laughs) p.m. for a summer when uh, we made all of our files digital. So that's my first, you know, when I got my toe in the water there. Um, And then as I continued to go back for summers while I was in high school, I started to learn a little bit more. They would give me more tasks Um, I started calling around tax collectors' offices and gathering some of the information that's needed for real estate transactions, and it kind of grew from there. I like to tell people I grew up at Accurate Title through um, high school, undergrad, and uh, my stint at law school. I always had a a role there and a job, and I've learned a lot of different things from moving around the departments within the title company. So 11 years, (laughs) a lot of people don't don't always believe that, but but it's been a while. I know, that's great. Very exciting start there in the basement with the files. In the basement, yes. I That's know. awesome. They'll a lot give of you paper chance, cuts. Yeah, give you a chance to read all the documents, get really familiar with everything. Yes, definitely. That's yep. awesome. That's awesome. So you've been in there for 11 years, you said. So what is your role now with an accurate title? Yeah, so now I am a closing specialist. So I am the one that sits down with customers at the closing table when they are either refinancing, purchasing, or selling real estate. And I go through all the documents to make sure that everything is understood and correct and just guide them through that process. It's really exciting, but it's also there's a lot of important information there, and I want to make sure that they get get that all. Um, And I'm also responsible for building and maintaining relationships with other professionals in the industry, such as loan um, originators and realtors. So I get to do a lot of the the people-oriented stuff, which is exciting to me. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot on your plate. Awesome. All right. Anything else we should know about you, Brittany? Hmm, I don't I don't know. It's it's hard to, to speak about yourself. Is there <laughs> anything else you you would like to know? I heard you did some volunteer work. Uh, yes. So um, over the past ten years, a few different things. Um, I did live in Rwanda for a summer. I taught conversational English um, with a, a group out there who had a few different focuses. They were teaching like proper um, hygiene and ways to cook food to prevent the spread of disease. Um, they went. There was a medical team that went in to help train medical profession professionals in the hospital. Um, there was a legal team, so I got to spend some time doing that. And I also taught conversational English um, in the city of Manchester. It's a receiving oh, nice. UN city. While um, I was in high school and undergrad as well, and then in more recent years, I have been affiliated with CASA. They're appointed special advocates for abuse and neglect cases in the state of New Hampshire. Um, So a few different things. Oh, great. So are you currently a CASA volunteer? I am. I don't have any active cases, but I I am. uh, Great. I do pick them up when, when we have time every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. I was a CASA volunteer for almost 10 years. So oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So it's a lot of work. So I can see how, you know, you can do it when you when you have the time for it. But I'm sure the legal background is a little bit helpful there, too. Yes. Yes, it helps. Wow. Wow. That's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I know you talked a little bit about your role within the title company. I definitely want to talk about the title company's role in the whole mortgage process. Um, as I understand it, Brittany, you folks are a locally owned and operated company. Is that correct? Yes. Um, we have three different owners. That they all live here in New Hampshire. And we have been, we've had the same owners for 37 years now. Um, so we've been here for a while. Our, our main operation is in Bedford, but we do have offices in Concord, Meredith, and Portsmouth as well. Okay, great, great. Yeah, I talk to a lot of realtors who are driving all over the state, so <laughs> sounds like you are wherever they need to be. Yes, we will follow them. <laughs> good, good. So when you think about the closing process, what would you say your role or, or title's role in general is within that process? Good question. So uh, there's sort of three separate 
pieces of our role once someone is under contract or has applied to refinance. Um, and the first is the title search itself. So we have abstractors that are going to search public record to make sure if you're buying a property, who owns it? Um, are the people who are selling it to you on the purchase and sales contract, do they actually own it? Are all of the sellers accounted for? Are there any existing liens like the previous seller's mortgage on the property that need to be paid off at closing? Have all the taxes been paid? Are there any um, anyone who is owed money that has a p placed a lien or attachment on this on this property that needs to be paid at closing? Um, are there any other interests in the property that the buyer needs to know about, um, such as easements or anyone who has permission to access the property? We just want to make sure that the buyer is fully informed. Um, so we do that, that thorough search of public record. We are also preparing the settlement statement. So while we're doing that title search, there is a team that's looking for any outstanding bills that might need to be settled at closing. For example, final water and sewer utility bills, um, taxes. Uh, property taxes will prorate at closing so that the buyer and seller are only paying the portion of taxes for the time that they'll own the property. Are there any, is there a condo association? Are they owed any fees that need to be paid at closing? Um, we make sure the realtors get paid, of course, very important. So we'll collect the commission statement and make sure that that's accounted for on the settlement statement. So we're the middleman for all of the money of the transaction, essentially. Okay. And then we're also preparing documents and scheduling the closing itself. So it's very um, important and sometimes hard. It's like herding kittens to get <laughs> everyone in the same room at the same time to sign the documents and do the transfer when needed. But we'll be the ones reaching out to coordinate that as well. And then um, we also issue the title insurance policies, which is a very important piece as well. Great, great. Yeah, I definitely want to hear about the title insurance. I know that is an important piece. Um, but if you don't mind, Brittany, you mentioned easements. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and how that might impact a buyer? Oh, yes. Yeah. So an easement is essentially um, someone else has the legal right to use or pass through a portion of the property that you either own or that you're purchasing. Uh, so for example, um, if you have a property that is not on a public road, you might have an easement on a neighboring lot where your driveway comes up to give you access to your home, or someone else might have an easement on your property if their driveway comes through, for example. Um, other common easements are utility easements. So if you have power lines either underground or connected in the air to your home, you'll often see in the deed a utility easement giving that utility company permission to maintain those lines. It's essentially anyone who has permission to access the, the property, um, and it should be described right in the deed so you're aware of it when you're purchasing. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because even though it's your property, people, especially like in that utility uh, example, of course, the utility people have to go on there and... and maintain the utilities. Yes, that, that makes that's sense. a mutually beneficial one. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yes, okay, perfect. That makes sense. Thanks for clarifying. Great, and uh, I know you mentioned the title insurance, which is, as you said, a, a big one. Um, so I'd love to hear more from you about that. How does that play into this whole process? Yes, so there's two different title insurance policies that are issued during a purchase. One is the lender's title insurance policy, and that is actually required if you are borrowing money to buy a home. And that's a policy that you pay for that protects the lender's legal interest in the property. Um, so if, if for whatever reason there is a challenge to the owner's claim to title, it's going to reimburse the lender for the money that they lent to you. Um, the other title insurance policy is the owner's title insurance policy, and it is optional but highly recommended. Um, it is usually a few hundred dollars. It depends on the purchase price of your property, what the rate is. But for a few hundred dollars, that's going to protect the owner's legal interest in the property for as long as you own it. So you buy it once when you purchase the property and you're good to go. It does not need to be renewed. And it covers a multitude of things. Every title insurance policy is a little bit different. Um, there are different options available, but it's going to protect you against instances of fraud. So for example, if we do a title search and we're looking at a deed in the chain of title or the history of the property, we can't tell if that deed has been signed fraudulently just by looking at a piece of paper. Um, so if there were there was a previous seller who came back and said, hey, I never actually sold this property, uh, and they bring the new owner to court, they're either going to pay that you know, previous owner 
the money that they're looking for, or if you lose your interest in the property, they're going to reimburse you all of your legal fees and whatever money you put into purchasing it. Um, that's one example. If you ever have issues with access to your property, it will cover that. Um, I'm trying to think of other, there, there's a lot, there's over 170 different things that these owner's title insurance policies can cover. Um, anything in the legal description that turns out to not actually be a right that you have to the property, it will reimburse for. Um, it'll even cover wrongful, a, a lawsuit that's just bad. So if someone doesn't have an interest in the property, but they want to put in a claim or sue you anyway, that title insurance policy is going to hire the attorney to take care of that, which okay. is usually would cost you more than what you paid for the title insurance right, anyway. Right, right. Okay. Um, so it's the best way to protect one of the biggest investments that you make in your life because course not many people the house is usually the number one number one um, debt that we take on uh, and it's just going to make sure that any money that you pay towards it is protected sure sure have you come across any kind of like crazy situations where the title insurance really kind of saved the day after the fact oh definitely um, so one of my favorite stories or examples is known as the Ann Place subdivision. So uh, a few years back, there was this old piece of farmland that was sold to a builder who built, I can't remember the exact number of houses, but a substantial number of residential homes on this land. And um, about 10 years in, the original owner of the land came back from overseas, and it turned out she had actually not sold the property to the builder, it was her ex-sister-in-law who had impersonated her. Oh. And so she filed in court um, saying, I actually own this land and all these homes that have since been built on it. <laughs> and they did end up settling, um, so she didn't take back the land. She settled for several million dollars. And all of those owners in that development who had title insurance, their portion, which I believe was about $25,000 a piece, like per, per home, um, that theirs was covered by the owner's title insurance policy. Those that did not have owner's title insurance were on the hook to pay that portion themselves, even though it was wow. through no fault of their own. Someone right. else um, had, had committed fraud. Mm. They are still liable because, I mean, that, that is just how it works. It follows the property. Oh, my. So, so it will protect you from a situation like that. There's also other minor instances we've come across. For example, um, a few years back, someone bought a condo, and in the deed, it described two parking spots that they owned along with the actual condo unit. And later on, a title search revealed that it actually should have only been one parking spot in the deed. So the title insurance company hired an actuary to determine, okay, what is the value of losing that one spot that you thought you were purchasing? And I think they paid out around I think, again, around $25,000 to the owner wow. um, for that loss of that one parking spot that was insured under the title insurance policy. Um, so it's a very broad range of things. That, wow. That can cover. Yeah, I guess and, so. Yes. Wow. Those are great examples. Thank you. I think that really helps people understand a little bit more in terms of the importance of the title insurance. And as you mentioned, there's no time limit on it. It's, it sounds like it's relatively cheap, especially, I mean, $25,000, but I can't even imagine the stress of living in that subdivision and then having someone come back and say, guess what? You don't really own your house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Um, and I'm trying to think. There was one other example I just thought of. But it just left me. So I'm not, <laughs> it's gone. Well, I think we had two really good examples, so I definitely appreciate that. Is there anything else, any kind of common questions that clients have that we might have missed that we might want to share with the buyers? Hmm. Uh, well, one thing that you'll hear over and over again from the title company as you're interacting with them through your transaction is um, a few things to expect at closing. One, we are going to ask for a valid government issued ID that is not expired. And you would be surprised with all of the crazy things that are going on while you're moving. It happens probably about once a month where someone comes with an expired ID. Um, so just make sure as you're getting ready for closing, you're, you're checking that, make sure you have that. And if you're expected to bring any funds to closing, it is required to be a wire or a cashier's check. Okay. That does require you to go to the bank to get. It's not just a regular check from your checkbook. And if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out, of course, um, to your realtor or lender for more clarification. But those are just two things that can just put a wrench in your day, especially if you've got movers and, and yep. trucks waiting for you. 
Um, anything else? I'd have to go to the bank to get a check anyway. Who has checks? <laughs> I know. I still do. <laughs> Daycare expenses. But, oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, but a lot of times, you know, if you don't know, if you don't do it every day, people will come with a personal check and, and um, that's just, it's just not accepted at the closing right. table. So you just want to make sure that you're prepared so everything can go smoothly. Um, also, at the be- once you are under contract, it is common to get a questionnaire from the title company that you're working with with all the information that we need in order to do our job. And so you're welcome to give us a call with any questions, but sometimes people won't know what that is mm. or um, they won't know to look for it and they'll miss it. Yep. So that's always a good thing to keep an eye out for once you are under contract because at that, at that point, that's when the title company will get the order um, from your lender and we'll start our job. And, and so the quicker you can get that information to the title company, the easier our job is. Right. The clock is ticking at that point, right, to get towards closing. Yes. Okay. So that goes out in the mail is what you're saying? Actually, usually via email. So everything oh, okay. moves really quickly. So when the title order comes over, usually you know, the lender such as Premier will provide us with an email address. So we'll send it out via email and usually give a call, quick call just to say, hey, you know, okay. we're Accurate Title. We'll be helping with your transaction. We're going to send out a questionnaire with all the information that we, you need. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But just good to keep an eye an eye out for that because yeah. we do have occasionally some closings that are delayed, uh, especially because we aren't able to get the information that we need or um, – permission to access the information we need in order to make sure that everything's ready to go for your contract date. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So I was going to ask at what point you're reaching out to the buyer. So it sounds like it's pretty early on after they've received that, that purchase and sales agreement. Correct. Yes. Okay. Good. Usually within a day or two. Oh, wow. Okay. Very quick. Yep. All right. Things move quickly if we want to close <laughs> in this environment for sure. Exactly. Okay. So people need to check their email either answer their phone or listen to their voicemail Mm -hmm. and get the information that we need. Yes, that's very helpful for you and for us. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, that was a ton of good information, Brittany. I really appreciate you coming in today and I'll look forward to working with you. Thank you so much.